Tell me about the search, how you found Good, the SS excellent. Pacific. Well, it's a rather long tale of how we discovered the ship. Uh, part of it was through science and technology. Part of it was through um, archival research. And part of it was tracking down the story of some fishermen who had picked up some coal in their nets. And so we were able to analyze the coal and prove that it came from the ship. And uh, we tracked down you know, very carefully uh, the location of that coal by getting the logbook of the vessel that had found it and that sort of thing. And uh, eventually those three things combined uh, led to us finding the ship. The ship from some coal in fishermen's nets. What process do you go through there? Well, the, the fishermen dragged their nets on the bottom and um, just by chance, this one particular commercial fisherman happened to save a piece of the coal that he had found. Uh, we had it chemically analyzed by a lab up in Alberta and um, it matched the chemical signature of a uh, coal mine owned by the owners of the ship. That is extraordinary that that was even possible. What depth is the Pacific lying in? Well, we never tell anyone the exact depth. It's kind of a, a trade secret, but the, it's between uh, 300 and uh, 700 meters. And how will you go about the business of actually getting to her uh, and, and, and doing, uh, you know, conducting the search uh, hands on? What will you do? Well, uh, we're, we will be using underwater robotics uh, equipment. Um, I used to work for a company called Hydrovision, which is uh, based in Scotland, and uh, know a little bit about uh, working with underwater robotics equipment. Um, so we will use underwater robotics equipment uh, this season. Uh, next season, we're going to build a rather large uh, gantry system uh, to excavate the main part of the wreck. We feel like it's the only way to um, have the right tools to actually you know, dig into the ship. And how, how likely is it that after all of this time, 150 years, that you'll be able to uh, identify and isolate the gold? Well, the gold was being shipped uh, in a strong room. So the California Gold Rush, and so it had a, a reinforced room that was on the main deck that was designed for the shipment of precious cargo. Uh, the ship took place, as you noted, in 1875, and so... Um, I guess 25 years later, but the ship still had that um, strong room uh, in it. And uh, we believe that the cargo that was being shipped is in that strong room. And, and it's also, I think, you know, we can't overlook the fact, can we, that 300 people, you know, perhaps more, lost their lives. You know, there's such a tragic aspect to this story uh, woven through and around uh, it's being a treasure ship now. Yeah, so there, there is precious cargo on it, but the, the real treasures are going to be the other artifacts that we find. So we believe that we'll find, you know, bottles of wine with the cork still in them. We'll find items made of leather, items made of cloth. Um, you know, the state of preservation of the wreck is uh, really remarkable. Um, and those will be uh, displayed in a museum. So there's two parts of it. There's a, a commercial aspect of it. Uh, we're recovering the cargo for the underwriters who are actually based in London. Uh, and then there's the museum part of it and all of the artifacts, uh, cultural resources, uh, personal belongings, all of those will end up uh, in a museum uh, here uh, locally. A wonderful story, Jeff Hummel, of, of life and death and the, and the, and the prospect of, of gold at the end of it all. Uh, thank you so much for bringing that to us this evening. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What do you think, Jacob? Treasure lost at sea, yeah, inspired no, by the thought. No, I think it's fantastic, and I, I think it's especially encouraging the what he noted about how the fact that it, in, it sounds like it's kind of being financial, that is financed by the gold, but the real kind of common treasure that we get in the public is an insight into what life was like at that moment and the artifacts and the stuff. And hopefully, people a bit of, in the museum get a sense of what life would have been like on those kind of ships. And I think it's great that there's an opportunity for yeah those the un lucky underwriters in London to they'll get their gold, but we, the public, as it were, kind of get the real treasure. Yeah, I, I would love to know the, the stories. I, I didn't realise there were so many people mm. who went down with it. So, you know, th that's a lot of people's stories to hear about. Yeah, and it, it gives you, it's that other side of the like, California gold rush. Mm. You know, you don't, you don't really think, you think about people just finding the gold and that's it. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. That's it, their lives are made, they're, they're, they're rich. But there's a whole after story about what happened, where the gold goes and yeah. 
you know, there must have been more than one instance like this yes. in that kind it, of territory. It, it, it does make me think because, you, uh, you know, gold as, as a, an investment um, is, is a very interesting subject at the moment. And one of the, the things that keeps gold being really, really valuable is it's the, the lack of it, you know, it's limited supply. But you do wonder, you know, how many of these, these ships are there around the world? Great, you know, gold bars. 4,000 ounces of gold. I mean, that is, I think the, the figure in question was $7 million at yeah. today's prices. Probably, know? yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no wonder, no wonder there's these guys, you know, roaming, roaming the planet, you know, looking for these things. Because yeah. as you say, the, the world, the world's oceans, the world's deserts must be littered. Absolutely, with I would these have things. So, yeah. it's, it's, it's also a real testament to human ingenuity in the way that they're able to piece together these kind of technical elements, the scientific elements, oh, and then they're going to build various robots to get down there. It was a great story for Scotland and for Great Britain, as it were, that there's this world-leading kind of robotics lab there that the identified, identified yeah. by a bit of coal. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know, amazing. astonishing.